We're going to talk a little bit about uh, surface area and volume, okay, of cells. Um, just make sure I'm on the right page here. Uh, so, here we go. Uh, surface area to volume of the ratio. Uh, for example, we're going to, we're going to kind of answer these questions here, but why is the body made up of trillions of tiny cells instead of a few hundred larger ones? Uh, and the transport of materials into and out of the cell is critical to the function of the cell, of course. Okay, so a small volume is ideal. Okay, that's the first thing. If the cell becomes larger and its volume increases, more molecules will need to be transported across the cell surface. Diffusion is not a very fast process, so it would not be efficient to have molecules travel far distances within the cell. Um, okay, so a small volume is ideal. We want to have small volumes, okay, small volumes. Uh, if volumes get too large, like for example this room, let's for example, let's say, you know, uh, some substance comes in on the cell wall over here, or cell membrane over here, it may take an incredibly long time to get over to somewhere over here, okay, if the volume is quite large, okay. So we want volumes to be small. Okay, we don't want the cells to be very big, very large. We don't want that travel time to be too long. Okay, a diffusion takes a while anyway. Okay, it's not a super super fast process. Um, it takes a little time for molecules to transfer, even if they're non-charged and small. It takes a little bit of time for that to take place. Okay, large surface area is ideal. Okay, more molecules are transported across the surface of the cell. Having a larger surface area means there would be more space for transport to occur, okay? And the analogy here is the amount of roads going through a city. So a large surface area Okay, means basically a lot of mo molecules could get into this particular section, right? So again, uh, if we're talking about the room, for example, if we have a large surface area, if we have a lot of places where material can enter from the sides of the cell, from the top and the bottom, et cetera, et cetera, the better off it's going to be, okay? More, more, air, more surface area is better, right? And then we're going to talk about, of course, the surface area to volume ratio. In other words, since we want a large surface area, and a small volume, having a larger surface area to volume ratio or SA over V is ideal. The greater the surface area to volume ratio, the more efficient the cell becomes. And if we're comparing the surface area to the volume, if this is large and that is small, what is your number as a result? What kind of number do you get if the top number is very large and the bottom number is very small? You get a what? Big number or small number? Right. Big number, right? So we want this to have a large number is the best. Okay. Multicellular organisms. Uh, it is more efficient. That we're doing now, yeah. It's more efficient to have multiple cells. We are multicellular organisms. Larger surface area to volume ratio instead of one large cell. The smaller surface area to volume ratio. Okay. If we had a one large cell, if we were entirely one large cell, could you imagine if some, something came in through our head, for example, and had to get to here? It would take an incredibly long time amount of time, okay? Whereas we're multicellular, we have a lot of little cells, okay? So when we take things in, of course, uh, those little tiny cells are able to take in the material a lot quicker, okay? Uh, have less distance to travel, basically, is what it comes down to. The larger cell will have a much larger volume, more time for transport, and a smaller total surface area compared to the total surface area of a bunch of small cells put together. Okay? And we're going to do that eventually here. Well, okay? Good? All right. Is that all you guys need there? We're all good? Okay. Now, here's kind of two examples here. All right? Now, I know it might seem silly, but picture these as individual cells where material can get in through any part there, okay? So even though it looks combined together, think about uh, parts that are in between here as well. So think about 
you know, anywhere in here and on the back side, et cetera. So even though they're kind of arranged the same, you can see that there's some space in between here where things, material could get in between these cells, okay? So again, even though they look like they're the same, the point of this is even though they look like they're the same size, more material is going to be able to get in through all the little cracks here on this one here compared to that one there, okay? The surface area of a cube, if you don't remember, okay, would be the length times the width, okay? And then we'd add up the, well, the six sides, yes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Think of a, uh, of a, die, a die, I guess, right? Uh, or, or dice, uh, basically. You would be able to come in through the top or the bottom, the two sides, and then the front and the back, okay? Uh, if you did the same thing here, okay, and you talked about, hey, look, these are the same size, basically. This is still 30 by 30, basically, yes, okay, so same as this, 30 by 30, 30 by 30, but in this case, we're talking about all this, we're coming, we can come in from anywhere around this particular cell here, okay, you can see the difference in surface area right there, they would have, okay, uh, again, if you're talking about volume of these two objects, you'd be probably talking about the same amount of volume, yes, I mean, length times width times height, so length width and height, yes, okay? But you can see that, of course, this one has a lot more surface area in that case there because there's smaller cells, more, uh, again, you can get in through the cracks here kind of thing, whereas this, you're either coming in from the top or the bottom or whatever the case might be, okay? Front, side, back, okay? So, some formulas, uh, mine didn't translate, but you guys have them there, okay? Uh, you got uh, rectangular prism, Etc. Etc. And what we're doing here is I'll give you these formulas if you need them. Okay. So I, I probably won't if I forget to uh, let me know on a quiz or something like that. But down the road here on the test, etc., you'll probably get these formulas in the question. Okay. So all you have to do is kind of use them and be able to compare surface area to volume. Okay. And just remember, uh, it's always surface area to volume. Right. We want a large number because large numbers are better. Okay. So we got all these formulas here, and our first example looks a little something like this here. Determine the surface area of, uh, to volume ratio of a cube that has a side length of three millimeters. Okay, uh, actually, in your example, it's three micrometers, isn't it? Okay, like that. So let's do that here. Surface area of a cube. This is going to be a little bit of your homework here today, but surface area of a cube is what? Um, and if you go back here and look, of course. Surface area of a cube is six times the side squared, yes? Because uh, basically all six sides will be the same, right? So uh, in this case, six times three micrometers squared, okay? So what is that? Nine times six is 54, isn't it? Micrometers uh, squared. Area should be squared, yes? Okay. If you're going to talk about the volume of a cube, well, the volume of a cube, of course, is length times the width times the height, but the, all the sides are the same, yes? Uh, so we basically it says here you're just going to take the side and cube it, basically, length times width times height, or the same number three times, yes? So side cubed. So what is that? Three micrometers cubed. So that's 27 micrometers cubed. Yes, so uh, a little review on uh, what do you call it, uh, surface area and volume, I guess, yes. And again, if we're comparing the surface area to the volume, <clears throat> make sure you take the 54. Now, you can put the units in there, but this is just the ratio. So we don't really need to worry about the units. You're not going to end up with any units here. We're just getting a number that represents how efficient this cell is. 54 compared to 27 is what? Two, I think, right? And that's just a two to one ratio or two, okay? Now you might say, is that good? Is that bad? Um, that's not really the point, okay? To be honest, I don't know. I guess it depends, you know, on what kind of cell you're talking about here. Um, but I don't really know. But the point is, is now that I have this two here, I can compare it to some other cells as well and decide which one is the best. That's the idea here. Yep. And you wouldn't put that two micrometers. No, two. I just said, yeah, just the ratio. Okay. Um, next one. Good. Is that okay? Okay. Next one here for a little practice is 1.86, what, micrometers again here. 
and this time we're talking about the surface area to volume of a sphere. Okay. Well, the surface area of a sphere is what? 4 pi r squared? Yeah. 4 pi r squared. And the volume of a sphere is what? Uh, 4 thirds pi r squared, right? 4 thirds pi, or sorry, pi r cubed, I should say. Okay. And it says that's the radius there. Just be careful. That's the radius. If we give you the diameter, what do you guys do with the diameter? You got to half it, right? So don't, don't, just be careful of that. Okay. Um, this would be 4 times 1.86, uh, again, sorry, 4 pi, I guess I should put here, probably do this in order, times 1.86 micrometers squared, okay, and this here is about, what, 4 thirds pi, 1.86 micrometers cubed, okay, and uh, I guess I'll just do that real quick here. I'm just going to get a calculator. I'm just going to do it here if that's okay. Just because the other calculators I, I find is 1.86. And just square it. That's 43.47 micrometers squared. Okay. And then uh, 4 thirds pi and 1.86 cubed. And that's 26.954 micrometers cubed. Okay? Again, if you want to find the surface area to volume ratio, that's the division you want to do. Okay? Which is about, uh, what, 43.47 divided by 26.95. Again, you probably, if you actually want to do this and, and compare this to another number, you don't want to round it, of course, right? Um, there's probably other ways to do that, so we could probably, um, you know, take the uh, leave the pi out if you wanted to, kind of thing. But let's take a look here. Um, so can I go up here? No. So 43.4. No. Yeah, 47, 46, 1578 divided by. Um, that answer there, and I get about 1.612 there, okay, is what that works out to be eventually here, okay, good, last example here, uh, I'm just going to circle this here, okay, uh, a plant cell, has the following. Again, these are micrometers here, actually. Micrometers. Uh, calculate the surface area to volume ratio. Okay, uh, why don't you guys, uh, I'll do this, you do this at the same time here, and we'll talk about the volume over here. Uh, the volume of a, what is this, uh, plant cell has these following dimensions. That looks like uh, basically a, what, rectangular prism they call it or whatever. Uh, basically, uh, what's another word for rectangular prism? No, like uh, it's not a cube, obviously, because a cube is perfectly, you know, cubish, right? Is that what you call a rectangular prism? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I just yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, that's easy. That's length times width times height here. Yes. And so that would be what two six four and a half. That's twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. I think micrometers cubed. Is that right? I believe. Yeah. No. Sure. Uh, length times width. So you're just going to multiply those sides together. Yes. Two times three times four and a half. Uh, surface area is a little more. Uh, we got to do two times the length and the width. Two times the what? Length and the height. And two times the width and the height. Okay. Kind of like that. Or I don't know what the formula is exactly, but you basically have to multiply. So you take uh, the front and the back, right? Top and the bottom and the two sides. Yes. However you want to do that. Uh, and you can decide what you want here. If you want, label it so you don't kind of mess it up here. But uh, we're going to have two times, well, two times two times three, and two times two times the height, which is four and a half, and two times the width and the height, which is three and four and a half. However you wish to do that, okay, that should be what, 12? That's uh, four and four and a half is what, 16, uh, 17, 18? 
18, yeah. And this part here is what, six and four and a half? I already think I said that was 27, right? Yeah, 27. And we're going to add those up, so that's what, 57? That'd be micrometers squared. Okay, good. And again, if you wanted to compare the surface area to the volume, we'd be taking surface area to the volume, which is 57 over 27. And that is what? 57 divided by 27, which is 2.11, which I think was the answer up there. Okay. Good. Questions? So, in this particular example, Okay, we'll go back and we'll check this out here, but it says, what do you notice about all three shapes? Well, obviously, you know, uh, they have kind of similar things in common. They're about the same size, roughly-ish. All of them have the same volume. Is that true? This is 50, no, sorry, that's 27. Okay, uh, this one was what? 27 rounded, yes, pretty close. It's as close as you're going to get. And that was 27 as well, yes? So all three of these cells have the same volume, about 27 micrometers cubed, roughly, okay? But again, it says all three shapes have the same volume. Which one has the most ideal surface area for a cell in this case? Which one is the best? Which one has the best surface area to volume ratio? And that would be number three, right? The rectangular prism, okay, in this case. So just kind of, you know, again, maybe that's not the case all the time. It kind of depends on what the cell looks like, et cetera, et cetera. But in this case, yes, in, in this particular comparison, that's what, uh, that would be kind of what you're looking for to do, okay? You're kind of looking to compare them and decide which one has the largest number, yes? Okay? All right? Good. Questions, anyone? Okay. So you got a couple questions there. You guys can start working on those. Um, and um, we're going to stop there for you all set up.